So hello guys and welcome to Survival Russia. Welcome to a very, very warm and humid day in the life of Survival Russia. Today we're gonna take a look at the Danish army. Low profile shelter for rainy conditions. I'm not so sure that this shelter is actually a standard Danish army shelter, but uh, we had a senior sergeant or I don't know what it's called in uh, American or English for that matter. Uh, but we had a senior sergeant uh, who was instructing us and he had finished the uh, ranger school in the States. So uh, that's where the ranger part of all this stuff comes in because uh, maybe he picked it up from there, I don't know. Anyway, that's how he taught us to do it. So I brought this e-tool here with me. I've seen some Chinese ones and it's absolutely an insult to e-tools to call those ones e-tools because they are not there. They, they'll break in 20-30 minutes maximum. This is a, an original issue tool and uh, you can see the US stamp there, Semco 94 there, and these are really good. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna dig a small trench here, and then I'm gonna get back to you as soon as possible. <laughs> it's gonna be hell in this weather here. I'm telling you guys, this is a horrible, horrible day to work in. Like most days in summer here. Damn it, and this is just pure massive wet clay and then we of course have a few bugs around generally just want my blood and or lay eggs under my skin and I have to wear clothes otherwise you'll be eaten up in no time it's not good at all <laughs> so as you should be able to see we have a crossbar there sticks across we also have a crossbar down here on the other end this is just for distributing of weight and so on but underneath all this there's a hidden feature that I'll show you in just a minute. Did I dig the whole trench with this tool here? <laughs> no, of course not. I've used plenty of e-tools, so why use a small e-tool? And you can use a normal shovel, right? But I brought it because at this 90 degree angle is really nice at the hauling the soil up with. So if I cheat, I'll show you the, when I cheat. <clears throat> That's how I do it here on my channel. I knew it was all important to get this uh, trench here dug fast as fast as possible so we run into a little problem the poncho i don't have a danish army poncho however i have a poncho like a military style poncho but it's not a military issue poncho and uh, the problem with this one is it only has four grommets and danish army poncho had more this is also like 20 centimeters shorter than the danish army poncho so i'm not gonna use it so what we're gonna use instead is my british army basha it's a little bit bigger but doesn't really matter. For nylon shelter, the British Basha is really, really good. So there we have it, very very low profile for the shelter. We we'll normally make these in a tree line, but uh, I'm not gonna work in there today, that's for sure. <laughs> All the soil we will throw back into the forest of course. And uh, another thing we would do then was actually to make a small path connecting all the shelters and, uh, and the guard post shelters and so on. We would clean them totally from branches and everything that would make noise so we could principally run around in the tree line without making any noise or making very little noise actually. Well here we have the hidden feature of the shelter. It's a rainwater collection pit. Well, here we have the next step. Pretty self-explanatory. We have the water collection pit down there plus the whole surface here. You're not in contact with any water so there's, so there's plenty of space for water to collect down there even uh, if you have to stay there for a few days yeah the basha here is of course a little bit bigger than the poncho but not that much actually but uh, i think our poncho was two meter and 20 long and uh, the poncho i have is like only 190 or 180 or something so it's uh, not usable for this yeah it's very often when i'm out in these conditions where it's either very warm and or very cold or so hard conditions. I often come to think about all this YouTube survival stuff and uh, 
There's a lot of good stuff, of course, but but uh, so many guys are only talking about the equipment, the equipment, the equipment, the kit, the knives. I need a new survival knife. I need this and this and that. There's so few guys who are actually covering the the aspect of psychological conditioning to be out on a day like this, for example. It's summer. Yeah, summer is nice. No, god damn it, summer is not nice. Summer is ultra hardcore. It's extremely warm and extremely humid, and there's a millions of box no new survival knife or titanium cup or whatever none of this stuff is gonna prepare you for this or something similar anyway okay enough of the renting but ah, now i could slide my uh, ground pad and so on in and then as you hopefully can see because i'm a little bit down in the ground i have actually quite good space in here I have enough space for a rifle and a rock and belt rig and everything on the right side here. So uh, yeah, it's actually a pretty awesome shelter. When we made these shelters in the army, we would we would actually not mask them or camouflage them very much. They would already be in a tree line like this, and uh, this is of course not sniper shelters or anything like this. It's simply just a method of keeping one, two hundred guys hidden in a tree line the best possible as long as the enemy doesn't have any thermals and stuff like that but uh, that's a completely different story i hope you like the video i hope you like the shelter i hope you appreciate the effort because this was a really really hardcore video to make i got pretty eaten alive please check the links in the description and uh, subscribe like share and all that good stuff and until next time get out and train get it done and see you next time here in russia